what's going on everybody happy monday welcome to another edition of mean streets powered by ftn and right here on the game plus network we appreciate you hanging out chris mean here with you on this monday riding solo as you see we are going to do a live underdog best ball draft it is draft season the nfl preseason is officially in the books uh we can touch on some news and notes throughout the episode if you guys have any questions at all please leave them there in the chat uh, if you're watching on Game Plus Network, you can hop on over to our FTN Network YouTube page, subscribe for free, uh, smash the like button on this video. And if you have any questions at all, keep really questions, strategy questions, anything at all, it doesn't even have to be football related. I am here to try and help you guys out because for me, I like to draft early in the season and take advantage of, of some of the draft value and guys that we've talked about on this show, like Damian Pierce getting in the 11th and 12th round, uh, you know, three months ago, two months ago is certainly not the case anymore, but uh, this is really draft season now. Preseason's over, hopefully no injuries in the NFL, and we can, uh, you know, just draft our teams, and we will be doing a lot of these drafts. Uh, from here until week one, which is just a handful of days away. Like next Thursday is week one of the NFL. Let's go Bills and Rams. Let's get it on. Later this week, I will have my guys, uh, but we have tons of links inside the description of this video, ranking sleepers for every single position. We previewed every team. We have a ton of live draft content for you whether it's best ball, high stakes uh, with Vlad Sedler, Nelson Souza, Michael Govier uh, taking part in a lot of live uh, high stakes drafts as well. So a ton of stuff happening on our FTN Network YouTube page. Of course, we have our draft kit live. I believe it's volume three uh, from Jeff Ratcliffe. George put a lot of work into that as well. Uh, 300 player profiles, rankings, cheat sheets, half point, full point, uh, tight end premium, super flex. We have a, an unbelievable amount of content, like high stakes rankings, like I mentioned, all the other settings that you're in there, uh, best ball content as well. Vlad Settler is constantly updating. I'm updating my rankings as well. And we'll have another uh, refresh later on this afternoon. I see some people hanging out in the chat. Deesh, uh, anyone, uh, let's got to move my screen over a little bit. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. Anyone who got Gibson dip, got to be feeling really good right now, uh, but feel awful for Robinson. Yeah, I mean, crazy news over the weekend, Brian Robinson. Um, reports that he was shot a couple times. The good news is, is that he's in stable condition. I mean, you never want to hear that stuff anyways, but the heck is going on in the world. But, uh, it, you know, it does sound like he's going to be fine, which is great news. There's no timetable for his return. Jake Seal and I this morning on all in football, you can catch on game plus network as well. This evening at eight Eastern, uh, a free show. Jake's coming at you uh, three days a week at 11 AM Eastern. Monday, Wednesday, and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday throughout the season. Monday will be like a quick hit show. You know, what happened over the weekend. Tuesday with Lauren Carpenter will be like mostly a waiver wire stuff. And then on Wednesdays, Jake and I will will chop it up and we'll really look at his rankings. He's one of the better rankings in the game. We'll compare mine to his, uh, pick apart his, and not pick apart mine at all. Uh, but man, we talked about it this morning. Thoughts and prayers, honestly, like it's just a scary situation. Uh, glad he's okay and he's going to be stable. And, you know, unfortunately, Deesh, you're right. Like this this kind of stuff that's, you know, bigger than fantasy football and, and things like that, you know, we, we kind of have to, you know, touch on it from that standpoint. Yeah, I mean, if you're drafting this weekend, you're drafting this week, you know, Gibson's going to come back up draft boards a little bit. Uh, I still feel like it's a crowded backfield. And when Robinson's healthy and he's on the field, I, I do believe he's earned the right to have first and second down touches and some goal line work that, you know, this time last week, all signs pointed to that, you know, everybody covering the team in Washington. You follow reports over at The Athletic. Uh, uh, you know, they have some great reporters over there following the team. And they have said, um, you know, it's basically like, you know, Robinson's the guy there. But, you know, Gibson does have an opportunity here to, you know, start off strong. I think still think Jaden McKissick is a really good target. Like his role is never going to change. And it's going to be, you know, Robinson kind of cutting into Gibson. And then you have, you know, Jaden McKissick keeping that third down role and two minute drill stuff there as well. Um, so we're going to break here in a minute. Uh, Medi's in the, in here. So I wanted to just walk you through underdog fantasy you can use the promo code ftn they'll match your first deposit this is best ball draft and forget it you don't have to worry about waiver wire stuff uh it's just uh you're shooting for upside you're looking for stacks we have all kinds of content over at ftnfantasy.com we have a lot of free content over there as well but if you're looking for the draft kit you can use the promo code meanie save yourself 20 percent. we'll be with you through the entire season in fact it's a yearly package so we'll be with you next year as well like through the draft you know uh, NFL draft takeaways, dynasty keeper stuff. 
Uh, so it won't just be this year. You kind of get like almost two seasons in one, at least two draft seasons in one. But you're going to get all the Jeff's rankings, mine, Vlad, Nelson, all the content, uh, Discord, projections, 40-plus tools. It's all available for you at ftnfantasy.com and all the stuff in here as well. But I just wanted to walk through how we start the drafts because we've done a couple of these and we've, we've just kind of been gone into them and that's it. But Underdog's really cool. I mean, it's fantastic. I love drafting anyways, but you see here, uh, a lot of the sports, you know, uh, soon over at Dangle Betselli, myself and Eric Young will be taking part in some NHL drafts. You got, you know, PGA, it's a co- no event this week, but NBA, shout out Rory, NBA, NFL, MLB. Uh, you can do like daily drafts uh, down here. You can do like for tonight's slate, eight games on the slate, you know, three person, three dollar, you know, six, four person, two person, fifteen dollar entry. And then you have these NFL ones like you can just do a 10 person one and, you know, you got uh, options to do a 30 second timer. You got options to do, you know, rolls through like the roster construction here, quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, tight end, 10 bench flex, uh, half point setting here. And um, you see the prizes and this one looks like it's going to fill like any second. Uh, and then you got NBA and NHL, as I mentioned, coming up soon. And then in season, like there's there's things that you can do like uh, props, right? You know, we love props on this show. You can, uh, you know, parlay some some props over at Underdog. So they'll match your first deposit 100%, uh, I believe up to $100. You see the the Scott Fishbowl satellite, $5. We did, we did a couple of those here on this show as well, Mean Street. So a lot of cool stuff. If you like drafting, I think it's... Uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's better than a mock, right? Mocks are just, if you're doing a mock on a random website, you're just not going to get a true feel. Like it's just, it, it just isn't like, it doesn't really work that way uh, in drafts. At least that's my feeling for, for mocks, but you get a good feel here because people are putting bucks on the line and you, you see the ADP and you certainly see guys r- rising and, and falling down draft boards. And we've been doing them over the past couple months and you can go back. We have tons on our FTN network YouTube page and, as I mentioned, Vlad Sedler and company, they've been doing some high stakes. I saw Damian Pierce on Friday goes RB19. 19, 19, that's the highest I've seen him go. I think that's a little high, uh, but I do have him as a top 25 running back. We've talked a lot about him. Love the situation. Uh, all the value is out the door. You are drafting him now at cost, kind of like at his upside. So, you know, there is something to be said about, no, I, maybe I'll pass at that point, but I still really do like him. I think he can be a low-end RB2, but RB19 is pretty rich uh, for me. See some questions. Uh, Brett is in the house. Uh, we'll break, and then we will go into this draft live. Medi, if you want to take part in the draft, if anybody wants to take part in the draft, let's let's go to underdogfantasy.com. Let's have the Pomeranian 4 here uh, live and ready to go. And I won't do it yet in case I'm, I think this will fill pretty quickly. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to, to hang out and jump in uh, with me, then we can do that. $3 entry. Uh, no rake, no rake at all, and 15 max. Uh, so we'll have some fun here with this underdog draft after the break, and we'll answer some of these questions uh, throughout the draft as well. So keep your lock. Mean Street's continuing here on Game Plus Network. I can't say enough about what we've got going on over at FTNBets.com. At FTN Bets, your bankroll can be profitable. With the FTN Bet Tracker, you can tell your favorite experts across all sports, including the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball. Welcome back to Mean Streets here on Game Plus Network. I'm your host, Chris Meany. And with our premium content, you can take your bets to the next level. Only $49.99 a month. tools the pros use at FTN. Our betting models run over 100,000 simulations of every game with sides and totals in the NFL, the NBA, and more. Use the home run predictor to see who will hit a bomb deep. Our NFL player projections will make you a DFS king. And the FTN prop shop always finds the best odds for your player props. All tools, projections, and models are powered by FTN Data.
Welcome back in. All right, so we're about to go live here, the Pomeranian 4. It is a $3 entry, 100K to first place. Uh, actually, 200K to first place is over $100,000. Let's start that over. $20,000 first place, and there's over $100,000 in prizes. So $3 entry, it's all fast drafts. You can do slow ones if you want, like if you don't feel like you can hang out for a draft and it comes at you quick, 30 seconds the clock. Um, but you could uh, you can do a slow one, eight hour clock in there as well if you wanted to uh, go that route. I don't really like uh, slow drafts, but uh, here we go. So if anybody's hanging out with this live, we have the link inside the description here and also in our chat, so we can do this together and see if we can uh, a few of us can get in on a draft. Um, you know, at the same time, this may go pretty quick. We'll do it. Boom, three dollars out, and uh, we are waiting on seven people. So we'll just hang out for a little bit here. And you see, um, it's all kind of color coordinated for the positions. You see the uh, the rankings in the ADP, waiting on four people, three people already. So this, like I said, it's going to come at you pretty quick here. We're going to try a couple different strategies, and we're already uh, set to go, just like that. Hopefully, Medi, maybe you got in. Some people got in. Well, I think we're going to do this a lot over the next couple weeks because I feel like you know, if major news happens in the NFL, we'll touch on it on this show. I have pick number five, and I'm going to try a couple different strategies with you guys. Um, you know, maybe a, a hero RB, a zero RB approach. Maybe uh, we'll attack RB uh, strong, heavy, early and often for a couple rounds and then turn our attention to wide receivers. I'm going to try like a maybe um, we'll see how the draft falls, right? I don't think you need to go in with like a, you know, just like one crazy strategy that you want that you want to take part. Maybe everyone's a little bit different with what they want to do here. Oh, three putts for powers in the house too. George in the draft. Let's go. And Medi made it nice. You're in the eight hole. I uh, love it. We got uh, Eagles in the house. Love your NHL stuff, by the way. Appreciate that. Uh, are you a birds fan? Fly, fly. Let's fly together. Um, sweet. So we got some people in here. This is awesome. This is what I wanted. Um, you know, take part with you guys as well. Albert, hello, Meanie. Hello. Good morning to you. Good, sir. Appreciate your support. I always see you in here and daily handle in the house as well. I was thinking about trying like a hero RB, maybe attack the running back position. Um, you know, one running back in the first two rounds and then just like maybe forget about it until round seven or so. But, you know, I think having a top five pick, I'm going to get an elite player. I like it. Uh, a lot of people have asked lately what spot they want to be in in a draft. I th I really like the way the board falls, um, you know, in round three and four if you're towards the end. But um, I'm going to get an elite player here, right? I'm going to go Jamar Chase in this spot. I was thinking between Austin Eckler, Jamar Chase. If I had a spot, you know, to pick, it probably would be top five, right? Like I said, you're getting an elite player. I think the drop-off happens from elites, you know, you won't get an elite player in the second round. I don't think, I think the drop off is probably mid second, but you're getting a, you're getting a stud, you know, three putts for par goes Taylor RB once and CMC, Justin Jefferson, Eagles, Jefferson. What's up, sir. Uh, you got JJ and then cup here at four and then Jamar chase. Like it's pretty much, and I would probably put Eckler in there as well. Um, as, as elite, uh, high powered offense, aggressive offense, you know, Justin Herbert again, and another year, the offensive line has improved in each of the past couple of seasons. They've done a great job through the draft and things like that. Lamar Jackson. Wow. That's, um, that's something that I have not yet seen, um, in a draft him going that early. Uh, so his ADP is probably hovering around the fifties. I don't know what happened there. That's a little early, um, for Lamar Jackson. I don't really think there's a need to do that. I don't know if, uh, cash me out 52 is like, um, hanging out actually live and, you know, has some things queued up or whatnot, but, um, okay. We'll, uh, we'll talk about things when they happen. Maddie's in the eight hole. You took Derrick Henry, sir. Derrick Henry was on pace for 500 touches last year, 460 carries and 38 grabs. I don't think people are talking about that enough. 38 catches was what he was on pace for. Now he only had what 18 grabs last year, but we missed half the season. So I guess if you do the math, it's roughly 36 grabs. I'm good at math. Not so much. Um, but, I don't think people are talking about that enough. He has seen a slight increase in each of the past couple of years in targets and catches. It's not a lot, but what if this guy caught 30 plus passes this year? It's another level that we haven't seen from an already like a stud that has a high stealing in Derrick Henry. Traylon Burks had a nice catch and run for a touchdown. And then there was a knee injury. There's been some stuff with him, some off field stuff with him. Uh, and then there's Robert Woods who's coming off the knee injury. Who's over 30 now. So I wouldn't be shocked if there's more, a couple more screen passes. If I was the coaching staff in Tennessee, I would run some screens for Derrick Henry. At least one a game. <laughs> this guy runs people over. Let's have him on the field and catch a couple passes. Uh, but we will uh, we will talk about the draft as it unfolds 
Kyle Pitts, w- things are happening here uh, in this draft. Uh, things that I have not yet seen before. I give you a little look of uh, the board here in the first round. Jonathan Taylor, CMC, Jefferson Cup, Jamar Chase, Eckler, Dalvin Cook, Derek Henry, Lamar Jackson, Stephon Diggs, Joe Mixon. Devontae Adams is my second uh, most owned wide receiver. Uh, Alex Pierce is actually my number one. Kyle Pitts as the first tight end off the board. So I think uh, King is thinking, you know what? I want Pitts. I'm definitely not going to get Pitts on the way out. That's it. He's got his uh, his plant, you know, uh, his flag planted, his plant flag. Monday mornings just come at you. Uh, they really do. They kind of smack you in the face. Najee Harris is in the news. Maybe we can touch on him. Um, I was going to do a hero RB and, and see if this could work. Maybe I still will. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll roll with Alvin Kamara as my my hero RB, and I can just hammer wide receivers. CD Lamb here is a terrific value as well. I think, you know, it's somebody to really consider as a nice one-two punch with Chase and uh, CD Lamb. But I'm going to go Alvin Kamara. Let's try this out. We'll try the hero RB strategy. Give you guys a look of of a my team, a team, and how it could look if you take a running back in the first two rounds. Alvin is my anchor. We'll go wide receiver heavy, maybe sprinkle in a tight end. I, you know, Pitts is a great guy to sprinkle in in that hero RB kind of zero RB. You know, really attack wide receivers, get yourself an elite tight end. Uh, but he's already off the board. Uh, so uh, it is what it is. We'll try this strategy out and see what the team looks like uh, with Alvin Kamara. It's recently moved into my top 10, him and Saquon, you know, with the news that there's going to be no suspension here with Alvin Kamara and Saquon's looking really good in camp. Uh, I I think both of those guys, I recently moved inside the top 10. I've had to, you know, Leonard Fournette a little bit of a step back for me. Uh, I still really like Aaron Jones. If you start wide receiver, like that option was available to me as well. I do believe, right? Yeah. He went just after me. I think if, you know, Eagles in the house, right. Get CD lamb there. I think if you get that top five pick, uh, you're still going to, I think tacking the running back position is, is key. Uh, get yourself get yourself a, a bell cow running back. There's only a few of them. I would take one in the first uh, first three rounds for sure. If you're at the f- right end of the draft, you could do it at the end of the second, or you can do it with your third pick, and you can still have two elite wide receivers. Um, so we are going to attack the wide receiver position here with Michael Pittman or Tyree Kill, I believe, one of the two. I like A.J. Brown in Philly. I think it's a real nice – real life NFL move for the Eagles uh, to get themselves a, a, you know, an alpha wide receiver uh, opposite of Devonte Smith. But man, I am really uh, drinking the Kool-Aid here. Michael Pittman. I was in on him last year. I remember the debate between Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell. Can you imagine there was a debate between those two guys? I don't know if there's another level for Michael Pittman. He already broke out. Like he had a thousand yards last season. He was fantastic. He's an upgrade at the quarterback position. We'll let the clock run out. I got it in the queue here so we can try to focus on hosting the show and doing the draft with you guys as well. So my apologies on on running the... Th- no, I don't want to be auto. So we, we'll take that off. Um, we'll go pit in there. So I don't know if there's another level. Maybe, slightly. Does, is he a 1,400-yard wide receiver? I don't think so. I think he could maybe get to 1250 or something like that. Maybe double digit touchdowns upgraded the quarterback position. Carson Wentz actually had a pretty good deep ball last year, but Matt Ryan has a history of like honing in on certain guys. Like I'm not saying that Michael Pittman can be Julio Jones, but if you go look back at the years where Julio Jones was elite, man, that guy was getting a lot of targets, a lot of targets. And that certainly could be the case. There's a lot of question marks after Michael Pittman. There really is. I like Alec Pierce. He's running two wide receiver sets. He's on the field. He's already had a Paris Campbell. It's going to be a run heavy team uh, behind a really good offensive line. Jonathan Taylor show. He's probably going to catch 50 passes. Naheem Hines is going to catch a bunch of passes in there as well. And then you got a mixture of uh, random tight ends. But, you know, when you're comparing, I think, Pittman to AJ, you know, you, you definitely have a run first team in Philly. Questions at the quarterback position with Jalen Hurts. We all like him from a fantasy standpoint, but taking that step forward as a, you know, as a, an accurate passer, can he live in that 65% range? Maybe, uh, but you also have Goddard. You also have uh, Devonte in there as well. So there's a lot of different moving pieces, 27% target share in Tennessee. If that comes over to Philly, you're probably only looking like seven targets a game. I feel like Michael Pittman's probably flirting with 10 targets per game. He should be inside the top 10 or 12 in targets per game. He's catching a, a lot of steam. Sutton, uh, man. I try to make Sutton a priority in all my drafts. I really, really like this guy. Uh, Daily Handles in the house giving us some news. I like it. Uh, we will break here in a second after I make this pick. 
Uh, I do believe our guys on the clock, Matty, right? Um, we can go over this. He says double QB start. Haven't seen that in like 160 drafts. Is that what happened with the um, Lamar? Oh my goodness. It's triple QB. So this doesn't happen often, guys. This is something that uh, is certainly strange. I don't know what's going on. I haven't seen that either. You know, Medi says 160. I haven't seen that once. Um, I haven't seen Lamar Jackson go in the first. Lamar, Mahomes, and Jalen. I mean, my goodness, this is um, this is going to be a, a weird draft. It's going to kind of mess things up for a lot of us uh, who want to <laughs> you know, uh get quarterbacks anyways uh we'll, we'll still try the hero rb will break Terry mclaurin marquise brown actually have hollywood ranked one spot ahead i am a big hollywood guy so let's uh let's i mean we've been preaching it so let's do it hollywood brown giddy up uh terry mclaurin i think most drafts you'll see terry go ahead of him but i am big on hollywood especially in the first few weeks of the season uh, you know, with Noah DeAndre Hopkins, you know, Hollywood had a thousand yards last season. He, he struggled with some drops. He's getting upgraded at the quarterback position. Kyler's more accurate. He's improved as a passer in each of the past three seasons. I think 69% as a passer last year. These guys are familiar with each other. Deep threat guy inside this offense. I think, you know, he could do, uh, it's definitely an upgrade over Christian Kirk. I think he could uh, have another thousand yards and I think he can get like double digit touchdowns. Really excited about Hollywood in Arizona. Just, uh, you know, drive safely, Hollywood. Three putts for par, back to back. Let's see what he does here, and then we'll uh, and then we'll break. He goes. Brennan Cooks. He's been watching the show. Is uh, one of the most underrated wide receivers in the game. I think I would have taken Terry over him there, though. But uh, and then he goes with Cam Akers. Okay, Cam Akers is in the news. He hasn't really been practicing. A couple players in the news: Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson. I see a question from Brett. I'll address that after the break. We'll take a quick break here. Actually, Tyler. Hold tight. I'm up in two picks. We'll take another wide receiver. I mean, Terry goes there. That's real nice. Deontay's in the news as well. Terry goes. Eagles is hanging out. He's watching. He's like, I'm not letting you get him. Uh, guy probably just queued up his QBs. Hopefully underdog doesn't cancel this out. Yeah, hopefully it is. It's possible. You know, when they see anything fishy, uh, they could cancel this out. You get refunded. That, that's it's a possibility. Again, I, I've never seen this. I don't really know what's happening. I would say Eagles is um, is probably correct. In, in that thinking, I'll take Deontay here. I'm not really worried about the shoulder. I'm not a huge Deontay fan, but I think at this point, I believe it's okay. We'll go Deontay there. He should be a tar tar target hog. What is the buy at week nine? We'll do it. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. We'll answer some questions. We'll touch on Najee and the shoulder injury from uh, Deontay. Hang tight. <laughs> At DraftKings Sportsbook, you can bet on nearly any sport imaginable. The NFL, the NBA, college football, college basketball, golf, the NHL, tennis, Major League Baseball, MMA, and more. Download the DK Sportsbook app on iOS and Android operating systems, as well as on your desktops or in mobile browsers. Get the best bonuses using promo code FTN. Remember, the only way to gamble responsibly is to win. Picks is a creative new way to parlay picks based on expected fantasy point production and single stat projections. You pick two to five players and predict if they'll go over or under their projected fantasy point total or their single stat total. When parlaying the players, the larger your parlay, the better the payout. A two pick entry pays 3x, a three pick entry pays 5x, a four pick entry pays 10x. As a bonus offer, there's a flex play option. This provides an added level of security on your entry where you can decrease your multiplier received if you miss one of your entries but hit on all the others. At FTN, we have prize picks coverage for every sport in both article and standalone pick format on our prize picks pick tracker. Use promo code FTN for a 100% deposit match on your first deposit of up to $100. 
Welcome back in. Uh, we are midway through round six. I'm going to give you guys a look at the draft board here in a second and take Kyler and pair him up with my guy, Hollywood. Let's see if we could get a little bit of a Oklahoma connection. What? That was at the Heisman season from uh, Kyler with 2018. I think we saw 1,300 yards uh, from Hollywood with Kyler, uh, maybe double-digit touchdowns. So let's give you guys a look of the draft board, give you a little bit of a feel. I wish that this didn't happen with the quarterbacks. <laughs> Again, it, this doesn't happen all that often. I, I wish we just kind of had a, a bit of a normal draft to, to show you guys. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this is what happened. So we are here now, a bit of a quarterback run in round five. You know, Herbert, That's uh, it's pretty late for Justin Herbert, to be honest. Uh, not bad. Nice little value there. So Herbert end of the fifth and we get into the sixth. Ayuk, uh, David Montgomery, AJ Dillon, AJ Dillon is a, he's a target of mine. I really like him as my RB two. And if you do the hero RB or zero RB strategy, or just, you want to do a normal draft and have some balance of the running back position. I think AJ is a fine target in the sixth round. Uh, I think he's going to crack a thousand yards, catch 40 plus balls. Dalton Schultz was on my radar. So even this hero RB strategy, I, I wish I had an elite tight end to mix in with my wide receivers. And I Dalton was kind of on my radar and I just missed out on him a couple picks before probably could have attacked uh, the tight end position. Maybe, you know, instead of Deontay with like Kittle or Waller, but Kittle and Waller are actually kind of on my fade list. I don't, I'm not a big, they're both really good tight ends, but I just don't know if they're going to return value. I, I think I'd rather Schultz like a few picks after him, but. Uh, here we are for the quarterback run, Burrow, Kyler, Tom, and Lance. And then we get into a bit of a wide receiver run to start the seventh. And Michael Thomas, Drake London, Adam Thielen, three putts for Pargos, Lazard, and Michael Thomas. Pretty good value there on Michael Th Thomas. We probably should uh, attack running back here. Like Pierce, again, is uh, is it may feel early, but I want him ahead of all those other guys. And I'm probably going to do it, to be honest. Like, you see the ADP 82. I wouldn't dive into that too much. Like, you don't need to like, oh, you know, it's I'm in the mid seventies. Do I take him now? This is a guy that is doing this. Like it is rocket ship, rocket ship. Uh, and I have him ranked higher than those guys. Uh, Hopkins is like the Arizona stack, but you know, he's, he's going to be out for the first six weeks. I don't want to mess around with that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll take, uh, I'm going to take Pierce here. It was like either Pollard, Edmonds, or Pierce. I'm going to take the guy that I feel will get more carries. And I like Edmonds. I like Pollard. These guys are both going to catch a lot of passes in their backfields. But Zeke is still the lead there. And I, you know what? Edmonds, guys, I know the fantasy community wants him to be a bell cow running back. But it's not to say that he can't be. But if you look at the back of the football card over the, you know, the course of his career, I think he's got four games and 14-plus carries. He's not that type of back. We saw it a couple of years ago. In a high-powered offense, you know, with uh, Cliff Kingsbury in Arizona, when Kenny Drake was sidelined, they had a game where they gave Chase Edmonds like 20-plus touches, and he wasn't all that efficient. I think he's just a nice change of pace back. He's a great pass catcher. He's going to be on the field a bit. But I think the carries will go to Raheem. I think the carries will go to Sony, and I think the red zone touches will go to those two guys as well. I don't think it's going to go to Chase Edmonds. Chase Edmonds, he, he never did that in Arizona. Again, it's not to say that he won't, and it was the first back that they signed, I believe, but... With Mike McDaniel, you know, he brought over Raheem Mostert, said he would play a similar role as he played in San Fran. And to me, that's a, a lead back and a, a goal line back there. So we'll get back into the, some stuff. I do want to touch on Brett. So he asked that question. Thank you, Brett, for bringing that up again. Uh, good, sir. I will, um, you know, keep an eye on this pick that I'm going to make. And we will we will touch on that uh, in just one second here. Uh, Dak Stafford, I get the one quarterback. I may try to, uh, you know, some people in the draft and tell them, tell them my secrets. It's all good. I got Medi uh, on the clock right now. Uh, he takes for us. I, I'll probably try to get Matt Ryan, maybe Matt Ryan. There's other couple cheap stacks that you can get like giants and Texans. Uh, you know, maybe Jags is some cheap stacks in there. I may go back to running back. So Pollard or st Pollard's still hanging there and I'll probably pull the trigger now on that pick. Sky Moore, these tight ends. Oh, Zach Ertz, 109. It's a little high. We'll pick for a bit. I'll probably, I'll do it. It's a little high for me, but part of this is like getting your stacks. It's not the end of the world. I don't suggest reaching significantly. I don't think that's a huge reach, honestly. I, I may have been able to get him in, in six or seven picks, but I got the stack and I got a three-man stack there in Kyler and, and Zach Ertz and uh, Hollywood Brown. So I'm fine with that. I think you do want to stack some some 
you know, some dudes here. So Brett, my apologies. Uh, 10 team PPR got offered Damian Harris and Deontay Johnson for Zeke. Uh, should he take it? So you got offered two for Zeke. Uh, is this your team? This is your team on the bottom. Okay. Um, this is good. You got Lamar, you got Eckler Mixon, you got Keenan Hollywood. Uh, you got Kittle, you got Zeke in your flex, uh, Rashad Bateman, Lockett, Hopkins, Lazar, Komet, Jarvis, Julio, a lot of wide receivers there. Um, okay. Let me make this pick and I will, I will, uh, I will address that. Uh, MBS shoot for upside. Robert Woods, Lockett, Burks, um, quarterbacks, Stafford, Cousins, Fields. I really like Fields lately. Uh, MVS, I will take. Uh, you guys know that I'm actually, you know, kind of in on Miles. I'm taking another wide receiver. MBS in there, a high upside guy. Can't okay, pick for it a little bit, Brett. Appreciate your patience. Okay. Uh, can we bring that team back up? Lamar, Eckler, Mixon, uh, so Zeke. So you got three running backs. 10 team, there's, you know, 10 team PPR. There's going to be, you know, decent players on the waiver wire, certainly. I think you probably have maybe like one or two, like, I don't know if Landry and, and Julio. And then you got to deal with Hopkins all year on your bench. It's, it's tough. Um, and it looks like you're only starting two wide receivers, right? In a 10 team. You know, you're going to have some stud while you're going to have tough decisions. His 10 teams are tough, man, because you have tough decisions to make every week. I would take that deal. I would take, you get two for one. Uh, I would take Harris and Deontay and then, you know, maybe move on from one of those wide receivers, maybe like a Julio or maybe, maybe you keep Landry just because Thomas, you never know if he's going to stay healthy. Um, I, I would take that deal two for one. A Damian Harris, you know, is people are sour on Harris. I like Ramondre Stevenson. I think he's going to take over. I really do. I think, um, you know, it's, it probably is 60, 40 to start the season, but you know, with Ty Montgomery suffering that injury, I think Stevenson, I, I do believe that benefits him as like, you know, Belichick's talked about him as being a, a great pass blocker and protection. He's kind of stepped up that part of his game in the off season, catch a few passes out of the backfield. Like Harris is not going to do that. You're in a PPR format. Um, so that doesn't really benefit, uh, Harris, but you're getting a lot of targets for Deontay. So I drafted him here too. I am a little, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little concerned on how this offense could roll with these quarterbacks. Big Ben certainly targeted him quite a bit. I believe he was third in the NFL in targets, but I still think he's going to be the number one there. A lot of volume, the shoulder injury. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Uh, Tomlin lied to us about Najee Harris's foot injury. He said he stepped on somebody and this weekend Harris said he didn't step on anyone. He's been dealing with a list Frank injury for the past four weeks. And that's like a four to six week timetable. Um, certainly a little concerning, but the fact that he was on the field over the weekend, I think is okay. But Tomlin did say that Deontay would have returned to that game. If it was an NFL like week one, he would be back. And if this was like uh, week one this week, he would be playing in the game. I would, I would take it. I would take it. I do like Zeke though. Um, as your third running back, I definitely like him more than Damian Harris, but I think you, you know, you're getting two for one. You're getting a running back in return. I am on the clock. I will, um, their tight end here. Joku. I like, Oh, I'm running out of time. Oh man. We are full Arizona stack. Rondell. It's a bit much. It's a, maybe a bit too many cards, but I, the clock was sneaking up on me there. Um, Sounds good. Thanks. Really unsure how I feel about having both Marquise in. Oh, sorry. Did you do have? Yeah. I think that's, I think it's okay. Maybe not so much in a 10 team. I'm with you. I don't like to roster two wide receivers on the same team. I don't like to do it. I think you can go, and I don't like to have a running back and the wide receiver on the same team either, especially if it's an elite wide receiver and an elite running back. I don't, I don't love it. Uh, I think, you know, in best ball, you can get away with it. And this isn't a best ball team. Like if you had Kyler on that squad with those two guys, then I mean, you're probably in good shape, but yeah, it's really tough. Like Hollywood gets going to get a lot of play. And then when Marquis comes and when Hopkins comes back, he kind of cuts in. I would try to maybe cons consider trading what you're never going to get a good return for Hopkins right now. Maybe you will, maybe you compare him and something up or maybe you trade Hollywood away and get, you know, get something in return. I agree with you. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I'll take Melvin. I'm not a huge fan of the two wide receivers on the same team, especially if you don't have that quarterback. It just kind of maximizes your upside, I think. And especially if the running back, you get the running back runs in, and the wide receiver doesn't get it, and then you have you know a rushing quarterback with, and like say you had Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts, like Miles Sanders not getting any rushing touchdowns, Jalen Hurts is running them all in. 
But again, we're talking basketball. It's a little bit different. Hopefully I helped you out there, Brett. I think I would make that deal or I would try to, um, you know, if somebody wants Zeke, maybe you can get a pass catching running back in return. Zeke's going to be on the field a lot. He's not going to be all Pollard. Zeke's a pretty good discount in drafts. That offensive line is uh, is depleted right now, though, so it may not be a bad idea to move on from Zeke. Get yourself Harris. When he's healthy, he is... Like, I'm not saying he's going to fully go away. Like When he's healthy, he's on the field, man. He fumbled the rock a couple times inside the 10. And usually, Belichick will put your butt on the bench, and that's it. GG. Uh, have fun watching. And There was multiple times where he fumbled, and they went right back to him. Uh, but that New England offense... Whew, doesn't look good, man. I know it's only preseason, but Matt Patricia calling the shots... I know last week we talked in the show and um, who do we have on Randall, Mike Randall. He said, you know, you trust Bill Belichick to be the guy, but doesn't look good right now. We'll take another quick break. Uh, we have a couple more segments. We'll, we'll roll through most of this draft. We'll give you guys a look at the draft board and we'll, uh, we'll definitely recap it. I know it's a little bit easier to see uh, kind of the draft board. So uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back and we'll discuss some of these picks and we'll finish out. The, we still got a few more rounds here to talk about uh, mean streets continuing here on game plus keep her locked. Welcome back in. Chris Meany here with you live on our FTN Network YouTube page, Mean Streets on a Game Plus Network. I am a couple picks away. We are taking part in a live underdog best ball draft. Uh, we are in the Pomeranian Four, $3 entry, 15 max. Uh, we have 20K to first place, $100,000 in prizes, 0% rate. Use a promo code FTN, save yourself uh, a little bit of cash. Actually, they'll match your first deposit. Up to $100, I do believe, using that promo code FTN. I took Njoku here as my second tight end. I was getting a little bit nervous there. I saw Irv Smith and Hunter Henry go back-to-back. I actually have uh, Njoku ranked ahead of those guys. Uh, Irv Smith, I think I may have one spot ahead. I really like Njoku. Let's give you a look at the draft board. I think it's easier to see. Uh, I don't know if we can move myself there. We'll we'll keep myself in the bottom left. Uh, we will definitely go over this draft. Uh, I think, you know, we have a couple segments here left on uh, Mean Streets, but we will... Uh, We'll go over this draft, you know, when it is complete, it's a little bit easier to go over it uh, and, you know, taking part in live and, and talking about it. It's, it gets a little difficult, but we'll do it. Um, I st- I'll, I'll go over my team here. Jamar Chase, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, uh, Michael Pittman. So I'm, I was trying to hear RB strategy with you guys. Maybe we'll try something a little bit different uh, tomorrow or later on this week, maybe heavy RB or... Um, we'll try a bunch of different strategies to give you a feel of what your team could kind of look like here. So Jamar Chase was the fifth pick for me. And then I went Alvin Kamara. I was back and forth of Aaron Jones and, and Kamara, but I went Kamara 
I think both were fine picks here. Michael uh, Pittman, Marquise Brown, Deontay Johnson. I took Kyler there uh, to pair him up with uh, Marquise Brown. I took Damian Pierce. I took Zach Ertz again, a little bit of an Arizona stack. MVS is like the upside guy inside the offense, running some two wide receiver sets. I like Sky Moore too, guys. Like I think it may take some time, but I think MVS will be on the field more than him. Paid him a lot of money, more than Juju. Rondell Moore in there is uh, another Arizona guy. Melvin Gordon is like a value running back that I've been talking a lot about in this show, round 11, round 12. I don't know if it will. I don't think it'll be 50 50. I think it'll be 60 40. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's closer to 70 30. Maybe it's 65 35. But Melvin Gordon's a really good back, better and back. He's going to be on the field. He's going to be a one two punch in Denver. Clearly more upside in Javante. But, you know, in this type of build, I think it's fine. And I've been doing the same thing with Tyler Algier, right? I'm, I'm kind of getting my guys here. Algier and Melvin Gordon is running backs. I'm on the clock. Uh, let's uh, is Matt Ryan there? Matt Ryan, boom. Let's go. Kind of working out perfectly for me to even get Alex Alec Pierce a little bit later on. So I got a bit of a mini stack there. You know, Kyler with the Zona boys, Matt Ryan uh, with Pittman. I have a lot of Pierce. He's my most owned wide receiver. And I only have Matt Ryan, I think, in two or three spots, and it is when I get Pittman. And I haven't been able to get Pierce. I get Pierce when I don't have Pitt, when I don't have Ryan, but we'll see if I can get him here or, or maybe he'll go. I mean, he may have already gone. He's been moving up draft boards. Um, did he already go? Yeah, he did. He's, he's, he wouldn't be down here. He already went. Boo. It's okay. Um, now I'm just curious where he went. Hardly paying attention. Alec Pierce, where are you, good sir? Where are you? Did he go? Can anyone help me? Oh, he did. He went just before I took Ryan. Okay. King Coakley. Nice pick. Like it. Pierce. Uh, won't touch Campbell. I think he just went. I wasn't going to. Uh... Oh, he's here. I could do it. I'm definitely not going to do it now. Not a big believer. Uh, do I get another quarterback? Uh, maybe want a third stack. Goff is interesting. Davis Mills is interesting to me. I. Um... Another running back here. So, I mean, Robinson, right? He'd already be gone, man. We really wish him the best. He would already be gone. Could take another guy here and maybe uh, Davis Price. Um, wide receivers, Van Jefferson. It's a guy I do like. Paris Campbell again. He's kind of sitting there. Evan Ingram, no thanks. I'll take another back. I'll probably wrap it up with backs. I don't think I'll take another one. Just, I think at this point, man, three rookies is not usually what I do. But I think at this point in the draft, you know, you're just taking shots on high upside guys, right? You're just taking, like, can, if anything happens, Elijah Mitchell looks like he's going to be ready to week one. There is an article in The Athletic talking about not drafting um, Elijah Mitchell. I forget who the beat writer was. Uh, a shout out to Nando DeFino and Chris Vaccaro, one of the better high stakes players in the actually is in the NFC, NFFC Hall of Fame. Uh, they were talking about uh, just the article that was at The Athletic about Elijah Mitchell. Uh, injury that may just kind of plague him all year and he could run into issues all year long with this injury could be a lengthy thing so i mean trey sermon hasn't looked at that great davis price is a guy that they draft in the third round they drafted sermon in the third round last year it's not a lock just because third round pick and people talk about that too much on twitter oh you know damian pierce a fourth round running back I'm not i'm not drafting him he can't be good if he's a fourth round running back like that stuff is so silly there's lots of dra- lots of running backs that were taken in the third round that weren't great Remember CJ Procise? Remember the hype that that guy got? Like, come on. I really touched the field. Uh, Trey Sermon may just be a bust. That's it. Straight up. Gonna, he could have an opportunity here if Elijah Mitchell can't stay healthy. Jeff Wilson looks like the number two. Uh, but Price could maybe, you know, definitely a team that wants to run the rock. I and mean, I do trust Shanahan as a play caller. It's hard to, <laughs> to trust who he's going to roll out week to week. Uh, but, you know, with all... If we look at last year and we carry it over to this year, if Elijah Mitchell is healthy, he should be a guy that gets 15 plus carries. Like there's multiple games here at 20 plus. I think we need to take another break. We'll take another break. Uh, we will be into uh, block number five. We're wrapping up this draft and we will go over it too. We'll, we'll give you a look at everything and we'll go over it and maybe pick up, see if we see some value and some, again, some weird things happened uh, in this draft is cash me out. It's 52 with three quarterbacks to start quick break we'll be back here on mean streets don't go anywhere
Welcome back in. We just started uh, round 17. Actually, our guy, George, three putts for par. How many triple, uh, how many three putts do you have over the weekend, George? So let's hear it, bud. Probably none. This guy's super sharp putter. Uh, he finished up round 16 with Eno Benjamin, and he started round 17 with Moali Cox. He stole my guy. I was going to do Moali here. Uh, I took Paris Campbell like an absolute sucker. I'm a fraud. I've been like... And, and when I say this, like these guys are in the NFL, I don't be too hard on them. I don't want to say that an athlete is trash. Like, I don't want to say that. I'm not going to say it. Um, but honestly, I'm a sucker because I've been, I've been saying to fade this guy all over the place forever. Uh, and here I am taking them. Um, you guys are super sharp in this draft. I'm going to take once. Ooh. Um, I'm going to try to get Logan Thomas after. Don't take Logan Thomas, guys. He's hurt. Uh, he's going he's gonna to come back. You guys are super sharp. You know, it, uh, at this point of drafts, between 15 and 18, I've been kind of reaching on guys. I, I just, I'm aggressive. I, and you'll see when I go over my team here, I get my guys that I want to get. I don't uh, think about ADP too often. And you guys are doing the same thing here too. Like Brevin Jordan and uh, Davis Mills, I think are really good uh, back of the draft targets. If you get Brennan Cooks, you know, within the, you, you probably get him outside the top 20 wide receiver, right? Because he's linked to Houston. People don't like him, even though he's finished as a top 20 wide receiver in each of the past two seasons. He proved that he can be just fine. He's a top 10 in target share, top 10 in air yards. I think he's like pretty much top five in those categories. Uh, and he's going to get a lot of work. But you can get Cooks. Uh, you can get Nico Collins pretty early or pretty late, rather. And then you can do a Brevin Jordan and uh, Davis Mills. So I've talked so much about Brevin Jordan. I haven't ranked as a top 20 tight end. I really like um, Brevin Jordan and David Njoku as guys where you see the ADP. They're just going too late. And I, I think you can be a round or two aggressive on these guys, uh, especially in Njoku. I think he has top 15 upside at the tight end position. And Brevin Jordan, man, he kind of uh, took off towards the end of last season. And not like he was a top 10 tight end, but... You know, he didn't play for the first part of the season. I, I like him as a, I think he's got decent hands, run some routes. There's not a lot of competition there. I don't think Davis Mills is that bad of a quarterback either. So it's a nice cheap stack. You get Cooks or you not, you get Nico. Uh, you can round out the, the later part of your draft with, um, you know, a, a Brevin Jordan and a, a Nico Collins and away you go. You have a cheap Houston Texan stack. Uh, they're going to be playing from behind quite often. The AFC is absolutely loaded. They're going to get crushed a ton. Uh, they're going to be chucking. They're going to be throwing the ball. You got Pearson there who can catch the balls out of the backfield. Uh, but like, he doesn't need to be part of your Texans sack. But uh, this team will be playing from behind quite often. Um, the Carson Wentz thing, you know, it's a, it's a late pick towards the end. And you guys, you, you crushed me. You, you ruined it. I was going to do a Thomas uh, stack there at the end, Cameron Braid. I think I do need a third tight end. I'm going to take uh, Bellinger, actually. Um, concussion confirmed. Ooh. I'll still take him. I think he can be sneaky, actually, as a, a bottom tight end. So this draft kind of went off the rails towards the end. <laughs> no question. Uh, I won't have any excuses for doing a show and hanging out and answering questions. There's, no, there's, there's none of that. No excuses. Drafts are fun. Uh, learning curves for all of them. Don't like the way that this finished, but we will recap it. Well, one more break. And we'll recap this draft. We'll go over some teams. I see a few of you guys in here as well uh, that took part. So we'll go over some of these teams. And, um, yeah, we'll just recap and see if we uh, saw any value and things like that. So one more segment here. Uh, guys, hang tight. Appreciate it. We'll be back in a second. <laughs>
All right, welcome back in. Let's uh, let's go over this draft. We have a few minutes uh, to go over it. We, we sometimes we go long here. We ask people to jump on our FTN Network YouTube page, but uh, Anthem and Sports Entertainment Game Plus taking this in live, so we will be out here uh, in three minutes just to get out and uh, have the balance of the show here. So it was Maddie. You you took my uh, you took my t- cheap Texans stack at the end. So this is how my team shaped out here. We have um, Jamar Chase, Alvin Kamara went with the. As I said off the top, here are RB strategy. Wanted to give you guys a feel on how things could look if you just take one running back in the first or the second round. Uh, you know, I I wanted to, as a top five pick, I, I needed to have one of those elite wide receivers. I could have went Eckler, and then maybe on the way back, you know, CD Lamb. I think that approach does work as well. But here are RB, you know, get a running back in the first two rounds, go wide receiver, wide receiver, get an elite tight end in there. I failed to get the elite tight end. Pitts went in the early second, and it just I think that threw me for a loop. But we did see some value at the tight end position, uh, but they all went in the second. Uh, Pitts, Travis Kelsey, Andrews, as you see there. Uh, and then attack running back a little bit later on, you know, was the guys kind of in that dead RB zone that nobody likes. Uh, you can do it. There's guys in there that could be, um, you know, difference makers for your squad. Just somebody in between running back 20 and 30. At least three of those guys can return value for you. But anyways, Jamar Chase, Alvin, uh, Michael Pittman, Marquise Brown, Deontay Johnson, Kyler, Damian Pierce, uh, Zach Ertz, MBS, Rondell Moore, Melvin Gordon, Tyler Algier, David Njoku, Matt Ryan, Tyrion Davis-Price, Paris Campbell. I'm an absolute sucker. The note on Paris Campbell underdog is that he had another target-free game. I am a sucker. I've been saying, do not draft this guy. Alec Pierce, Alec Pierce, Alec Pierce is the guy that you want. Uh, but Pierce goes in the 14th round. Paris Campbell's a dart throw uh, because I had, uh, you know, Matt Ryan. I, I wouldn't draft him, guys. Like, best ball, you can make case for anybody. Maybe he'll have some high weeks, but I wouldn't expect too many from uh, Paris Campbell. That's for sure. Uh, it's Pierce running the two wide receiver sets there. And then, you know, these last two picks are kind of just like garbage picks, honestly. You know, I've been doing a little bit of Wentz. If I have Dotson late, if I go Terry, you know, you can get Wentz. Nobody wants Wentz. You can get Wentz in the in the final round. I was trying to do a Wentz and Logan Thomas. It just uh, Logan Thomas went. Logan Thomas is back on the field. It was sounding like he was going to miss some time, but he's back on the field. It's not a great stack. This time last year, people liked Logan Thomas as a top 12 tight end. He had a good year the previous season. I wouldn't be shocked if he was like the number two target for Carson Wentz behind Terry. I, I not at all. I think he's a, I think he's a pretty good tight end. It's a cheap stack. You could do, it's not a high upside stack, but you can go Wentz and Logan Thomas at the end, but it does work out better. If you have a wide receiver, uh, Medi, let's look at your team here. So you went Henry, uh, Deandre Swift, Mike Williams, Travis Etienne, Mooney, Devante, Kadarius, Tony, Russell Wilson, Kareem Hunt, uh, Albert O. So you got the tight end. You got Albert O and Russell in there. Uh, you did get Dawson, Isaiah McKenzie, KJ Hamler. So you got a bit of a Denver stack in there. And then you got the cheap Houston stack that we talked about in the last block. I think it's perfect. I really like that stack. And it's uh, you were aggressive to get it. And I think you should. And around this point, like no point risking. Oh, I'll wait another round. Go get your guys if you feel uh, strong about those guys. So you say you missed out on a few stacks, but you're happy to sneak in that one. I agree. I think it's a nice cheap stack that you can. And then I certainly can get behind Brevin and uh, Davis Mills in there. Let's go to Eagles. He was hanging out with us. We got 30 seconds. We'll get out of here. Oh, wow. Really like your start. So you went uh, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver here. Look, JJ, CD, Mike Evans, Juju, Terry McLaurin. Oh, baby. Let's go. Trey Lance. Love it. Adam Thielen. Then you take uh, the value on Pollard, Antonio Gibson, Kenneth Walker value, Naheem Hines, Alexander Madison. So you're shooting here. Madison's a guy, right? If anything happens to Cook, we know he can be a bell cow inside that offense. Hines. I think you want to attack um, guys that could have full workloads. You did that with uh, with Walker and Madison and, you know, pass catching running backs in around this range. Uh, Hines going to catch some passes and you finish it with some tight ends. Everett, Higby and Hooper. I don't love them, but I, I do like Everett and Hooper, right? Those, you know, at that point, you're really just shooting for those tight ends uh, that are, you know, can find the end zone. And then, you know, wrapped it up with Dearness and Trey Sermon, just kind of dart throws. Ernest, right? Kareem Hunt could get flipped, and all of a sudden you got yourself, um, you know, a really solid value there. I'm sorry that this block finished so quickly. I would have liked to dive into some of these picks, but uh, maybe we can do that on tomorrow's episode. Appreciate you guys hanging out and Game Plus as well. We'll be back tomorrow. Maybe we'll do this again. Uh, Hopefully you had some fun. FTN, promo code for you. Have a good one. Cheers. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.